August 2011, my heart was filled with joy and delight after I fulfilled all requirements for a bachelor's degree at the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ilefe, southwestern part of Nigeria. I was happy because all fresh Nigerian graduates are expected to proceed to a one-year national youth service towards I mean, the fulfillment of the visions of the forefathers of Nigeria. However, my joy and delight was cut short when the list for deployment I mean, became public. Lo and behold, I was posted to Brano State in the northeastern part of Nigeria. Brano State used to be one of the most peaceful states in Nigeria, with beautiful people, beautiful culture. And as a matter of fact, it was the pride of northern Nigeria. But within a short period of time, it has become one of the most dreaded places to be in the entire Sahara region. And this is as a result of the activities of the Boko Haram terrorist group, which has claimed responsibility for thousands of innocent lives, destruction of properties worth billions of naira, and of course, the displacement of over four million people in Nigeria. I remember clearly how traders from my community in Ibadan, southwestern part of Nigeria, went to Borno State to buy beans, tomatoes, and onions with the intention of I mean, coming back to the southwestern part to sell. But they returned in body bags. The whole community went into mourning. I cried all night. So when I was posted to Borno State, I didn't think twice. I rejected the posting. My friends advised me to, my parents advised me to, and I sought for a deployment. Eventually, my redeployment I mean, was approved, and I was posted back to where I came from. As I moved back to my new place of primary assignments, several questions came to my mind. Lawal, you're running away from Borno State because your families are not there. You're running away from Borno State because you think that your future is not tied to Borno State. What about those who just cannot run away? What about those whose ancestral home is basically being destroyed on a daily basis? I searched for answers I couldn't find. Then I remembered a popular quote by famous I mean, German theologian Martin Lemola. He says, they came for the socialists, you didn't speak up because you were not a socialist. They came for the trade unionists, you didn't speak up because you were not a trade unionist. They came for the Jews, you didn't speak up because you're not a Jew. When they came for you, there was no one left to speak. At that point, I made up my mind that I was going to do something to ensure that peace is restored, I mean, restored to Brno states and every conflict zone in Nigeria. That was a turning point for me. So in 2016, I started a movement called Nigeria Youth for Peace Initiative. And it was basically, I mean, a group of young people who were determined, I mean, to take actions towards ensuring that peace, you know, is restored to Borno State and all conflict zones in Nigeria. With our Nigeria Youth for Peace Initiative, we are building the next generation of peace builders through peace education. We are visiting primary and secondary schools uh, teaching them social values. We're also creating, I mean, uh, a platform through our Youth for Peace Summit, annual Youth for Peace Summit, bringing together relevant stakeholders, creating intergenerational dialogue towards ensuring that, I mean, peace comes back to our conflict zone in Nigeria. However, there is a big problem to young people's participation, I mean, decision-making and peace processes. And that is why you find young people's involvement in criminality and violence on the high in Nigeria. The society still believes strongly in the adage that says, what an elder will see while sitting down, the young ones will not see even when standing on their toes. And this simply means that 
the elders, because of the long, I mean, years they've spent on earth, because of their experiences, they can perceive and understand things and contribute, I mean, meaningfully to decision-making processes better than young people. This is one of the institutionalized marginalization and injustice that young people in Nigeria are facing. <sighs> I remember clearly in 2017, as a countering violent extremism project, we identified a community that has gone through, I mean, violence for close to three years. That particular community is hosting one of the tertiary institutions in Nigeria. And as a result, you have, I mean, cultism and gang violence gaining currency. This has resulted, I mean, in daily killings of members in the community, raping of women. The traditional ruler in that community, religious leaders, the police, found it difficult, I mean, to stop because they were basically given instructions and command. Just tell them, please stop this thing, stop this thing, without listening to the issues and the interest. Eventually, the conflicts, I mean, lingered on, and the wisdom and capacity of the elders became questionable. Myself and my team moved in, identified an entry point, someone who had, I mean, uh, uh, felt so who has lost uh, a, a close relative to the cultist attack. We identified the various cult groups, spoke with them severally. At the end of the day, we were able to foster a dialogue. We asked them to choose the venue of the dialogue. We asked them to choose the dates. We asked them to, I mean, we gave them ownership of everything and we were able to resolve it. This was something the elders could not resolve. And they were amazed. The elder, the elders, the traditional, they were amazed at how come we came I mean, with such a resolution. I'm not saying we don't need the elders anymore. What I'm saying is that young people should be given the space and cooperation to support I mean, peace processes. What I ask now is that we should increase our support for youth building peace, whether through direct partnership with young people or through youth-led organizations, because we have, I mean, shown over time in Nigeria that young people have an untapped ability that we can leverage upon if peace will restore to Nigeria. A peaceful world is possible if young people are given the needed support, cooperation to transform our world. Thank you.